Good day. Today we are going to discuss physical fitness test. What is physical fitness test? Its goals and components. So what is physical fitness test? Physical fitness test is a set of measures designed to determine one's level of physical fitness. It has two components, namely health-related and skill-related tests. There are 1,001 tests used worldwide, but the choice of the test considered time efficiency in the administration, availability of equipment, simplicity of the procedures, and practicality of the test. In this video lesson, we will only be discussing the health-related components. A separate video lesson will be given for the skill-related components. What are the goals of physical fitness? Number one, to determine the level of fitness. Two, to identify strengths and areas for development or improvement. Three, to identify basis for physical activities. Four, to gather and analyze data for norms and standard settings. So as you see, we don't do physical fitness tests for nothing. The scores you obtain from doing each test were collected and interpreted. And lastly, to motivate and guide students in choosing sports activity they would like to participate. Part of the physical fitness test, or PFT, specifically skill-related components, is to guide you in choosing sports activity that best suits you. Let's say, for example, if you do well in taking agility tests, most likely you will perform well in sports which requires you to move quickly and easily, like basketball, soccer, and volleyball. So here are the testing paraphernalia that we need. First aid kit, drinking water, towel, and scorecards. For body composition, we use tape measure and weighing scale. For flexibility test, we use tape measure and ruler. For cardiovascular endurance, we use stopwatch, step box, and metronome or clapper. So if you do not have stopwatch, you may use your cell phone. Muscular strength, mat. Speed, we use stopwatch. Again, if you do not have a stopwatch, you may use your cell phone. Power, we use meter stick or tape measure. For agility test, we use tape measure and masking tape or chalk. Reaction time, we use a 24-inch plastic ruler. For coordination, we use SIPA or any similar local material. So, you can also use a bunch of rubber bands. And for balance, we use stopwatch. Again, if you do not have stopwatch, you may use your cell phone. Sequence in test administration. So, lahat po ng physical fitness test natin ay hindi po natin gagawin ng isang araw lang o dalawang araw lang. Pwede po natin sundin to para alam natin kung ano yung pwede natin pagsabay-sabayin sa isang araw. Okay? So, for day 1, you can do the BMI and the 3-minute step test. For day 2, we have the basic plank, the push-up, zipper test, and sit and reach. For day 3, stick drop test and hexagon agility test. For day 4, we have the juggling, standing long jump, and stork balance stand test. And for day 5, we have the 40-meter sprint. So, since tayo po ay nasa bahay at hindi po tayo lahat ay siguradong merong lugar kung saan natin pwedeng gawin tong 40-meter sprint, okay lang kahit hindi nyo na siya gawin. Okay po? Okay. So, like what I have said a while ago, we will be focusing only on the health-related fitness test. 
So, what do you mean when we say health-related fitness tests or components? So, it refers to those physical attributes which enable a person to cope with the requirements of daily living, such as cardiovascular endurance or stamina, muscular strength and endurance, flexibility, and the appropriate body mass index or the BMI. So, to make it simple, we can also say that health-related fitness tests refers to the ability of a person to become and stay physically healthy. The very first one under health-related fitness components is what we call the body composition. So what do you mean when we say body composition? Body composition refers to the body's relative amount of fat to fat free mass. So how do we calculate that? There, we will be using the body mass index or what we call the BMI. So, ano naman po yung BMI? BMI refers to the measurement of a person's weight with respect to their height. It's also a good way to know whether your weight is in a healthy proportion to your height. Although it has some limitations because it does not distinguish between excess fat and muscle or bone mass. So, how do we compute for BMI? In computing BMI, we will be using this formula. Weight in kilograms divided by height in meter square. So, let's say for example, you have a weight of 30 kilograms and a height of 1.20 meters. So, ayan na po. Uh, yung 30, nilagay na natin sa taas kasi siya yung weight. And yung 1.20 ay nilagay natin sa baba dahil siya naman yung Height. Siguraduhin lang po natin na kapag nag-compute tayo or bago tayo mag-compute, na yung mga figures natin ay nasa kilograms at nasa meters. So kung hindi po, kailangan po natin mag-convert. Okay? So here, yung weight, wala na po tayong gagawin dyan. As is yan, 30. But in height, we have to square the height before we proceed to division. So, how do we do that? We will multiply the height by, the height by itself. So, we multiply 1.20 by 1.20. That would give you 1.44. After that, you can now divide. Now, if you are using calculator or cell phone, unahin po natin pindutin ang weight, which is 30, then divide by 1.44. 44. Then we get 20.83. So, since nakuha na natin yung 20.83, we can now interpret yung BMI natin. In this case, given the weight of 30 kilograms and height of 1.20 meters, we can say that the person has a normal BMI. So, this is the table of classification. As you can see, if you have a BMI of below 18.5, you are considered as underweight. 18.5 to 24.9, normal. 25 to 29.9, overweight. 30 to 39.9, obese. And 40 and above, extremely obese. So, katulad ng example natin kanina, ang na-compute natin na BMI ay 20.83, kaya pasok siya doon sa normal. Kasi sa normal, nag-range siya from 18.5 to 24.9. So, ano ba yung ideal BMI? Of course, it is the normal. So, if you are underweight, overweight, obese, or extremely obese, it means you have to do something kasi hindi ideal yung BMI mo. Since we already know how to compute the body mass index or our BMI, alam na natin kung ano yung formula na gagamitin natin, and we already know that we need the measurement of our weight and height before we do the computation, so proceed naman tayo kung papaano ba yung tamang pagkuha ng weight and height. So, let us first discuss kung papaano ba sa weight. Of course, in this activity, we will be using a weighing scale. But before we move forward, let us first identify what do you mean when we say weight. So weight refers to the heaviness or 
lightness of a person. So, what are the things that the performer needs to remember during the procedure? So, for the performer, o yung sinasabi natin, siya yung kukuhanan ng weight. Okay po? So, the very first thing that he needs or she needs to remember is he or she should wear light clothing before weighing. So, kasama na rin po natin dito. So, say, for example, you have coins in your pocket, you have to remove that. Anything that you think can add extra weight, aalisin po natin yun. Okay, next. On bare feet, stand erect and still with weight evenly distributed on the center of the scale. So, if you're wearing socks, okay lang naman po. Normally, if we do that in school, may mga nakasocks naman talaga o nakamedyas naman talaga. But please avoid unnecessary movements at tumayo po tayo ng maayos. For the partner, before the start of weighing, adjust the scale to zero point. Stand in front of the performer to get the weight. So, wag po tayo sa gilid or sa likod. Doon po tayo sa mismong harapan ng weighing scale. At yung mismong kinukuha na ng timbang, wag na pong yumuko. Hayaan na yung partner na kumuha ng sukat. Record the score in kilograms. So, let's say for example, hindi in kilograms yung magamit natin. Then, we need to convert. Okay, so scoring record body mass in the nearest 0.5 kilograms. Next is height. Okay, so that is the proper way of getting the height. When we talk about height, it refers to the distance between the feet on the floor to the top of the head in standing position. In getting height, we will make use of the following. We need a tape measure, L square, and an even and firm floor and flat wall. Okay, so dun po sa tape measure or sa meter stick, kahit ano dun ang gamitin ninyo, kailangan po yung zero point yun yung nasa baba. At dun naman po sa L square, if ever na hindi siya available, you can make use of ruler. Kaya lang po, kapag ginamit natin yung ruler, sisiguraduhin lang po natin na ang posisyon ng ruler ay nakaganito. Okay? So, hindi po siya pwedeng nakaganito. At kapag gumamit tayo ng ruler, kailangan, kapag nakapatong sa ulo, kailangan nakastraight po ah. Hindi pwedeng nakaganyan, hindi pwedeng nakaganito. Kailangan makikita nyo na straight yung ruler. Tapos, ang gagamitin po natin kapag tayo ay kumukuha ng height, yung nasa baba. Siyempre, kung ano po yung nakapatong sa ulo, yun po yung kukuha na natin ng sukat. And, of course, bago tayo magpatuloy, um, before we get the height, lalo-lalo na po sa mga babae, kung masyadong mataas ang ipit sa buhok, pakitanggal po. Sa mga lalaki naman, kung halimbawa naka-gel, eh, hindi po pwede doon mag-uumpisa. Kailangan, maramdaman na sa mismong ulo nakapatong yung L-square or yung ruler natin. Okay, for the performer, stand erect on bare feet, with heels, buttocks, and shoulders pressed against the wall where the tape measure is attached. So, wag po tayong nakaslaw siya, kailangan daretso ang tayo natin. And, For the partner, place the L square against the wall with the base at the top of the head of the person being tested. Make sure that the L square when placed on the head of the student is straight. Yan, katulad po na sinabi natin kanina. And parallel to the floor. The L square should be straight and parallel to the floor. L square or ruler. Anything will do. Measure the height from the base of the L square. So kung ang L square, yung sa L square po natin, yung pinaka baba. Record the score in meters. So dun po sa ating ano, sa ating panukat, dun po sa tape measure or sa meter stick, ang makikita po nating mga measurement doon ay inches and centimeter. So I suggest para mas madali po tayong mag-convert, 
gamitin po natin yung centimeter. Kasi kung halimbawa centimeter ang gagamitin natin, alam naman natin na 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter. So kung halimbawa yung makuha natin ay 125 centimeter, syempre ang gagawin lang natin doon, gagawin lang natin siyang 1.25 meter. Okay po? Okay, next is the flexibility. So, under flexibility, we have two tests. We have the zipper test and the sit and reach. Now, let's us first discuss zipper test. So, zipper test is a test that is used to measure how flexible your upper arms and shoulder joints are. So, here is the proper way of doing the zipper test. Okay, for the equipment, we will make use of Ruler. And for the performer, these are the things that he or she has to do. Okay? So, first, you should stand erect. And the second one, you raise your right arm, bend your elbows, and reach down across your back as far as possible. To test the right shoulder, extend your left arm down and behind your back, bend your elbow up across your back, and try to reach or cross your fingers over those of your right hand as if to pull a zipper or scratch between the shoulder blades. So, to best describe that, or para mas madali nyong maintindihan, ha, take a look at the illustration. So, dito makikita natin yung proper way kung papaano siya gagawin. Dun sa right lower part of the illustration, dito nyo na yung makikita yung tamang position ng hand. So, kapag ganyan na, you can now measure. In this uh, way, in this case, I would suggest that you use a ball pen to mark kung hanggang saan yung naabot niya or naabot ng performer para mas madalian kayo, lalo na dun sa sinusukatan para pwede niya nang alisin at masusukat pa rin ng maayos. Dito, ang susukatin nyo or yung imamark niyo at ire-record ay yung naabot ng middle finger. Okay, next is the task of the partner. So, before we proceed, I would like to remind that the partner is only there to measure and record. Hindi nyo po trabaho na tulungan yung nagpa-perform na maabot po hanggang saan yung gusto niyang maabot. Hindi nyo po siya hahawakan. Okay, nandun lang po kayo para sukatin at i-record kung hanggang saan yung naabot niya. Okay? So, you have to identify kung nag-touch, nag-overlap, or gap yung middle finger of both hands. Okay, so paano po yun? So, kapag sinabi nating touch, ibig sabihin yung middle finger ng right at yung middle finger ng left ay nagtama lang. Ganito lang po yung nangyari. Yan, ganyan lang siya. Nag-touch lang. Okay? Pag sinabi nating nag-overlap, ibig sabihin nagpatong po. Yan, ganyan na siya. Ngayon, it doesn't matter kung malapit lang or buong kamay na yung natamaan, okay lang po yan. At as long as nagpatong siya, considered siya as overlap. Ngayon, kapag ganyan po, that is the time na susukatin nyo kung gaano ba kalaki yung overlap. So, saan kayo mag-umpisa? Mag-umpisa kayo dito sa middle finger to any part kung saan, hanggang saan yung naabot niya. Let's say, for example, ganito. Halos isang buong palad na yung naabot. So, susukatin nyo mula dito hanggang doon sa dulo, gagamitan nyo siya ng ruler, susukatin nyo kung ilang centimeter ang naabot niya. Okay? Now, paano naman po yung gap? Pag sinabi naman nating gap, ibig sabihin, hindi nagtama at lalong hindi nag-overlap nag yung middle finger ng both hands. So, paano yun? Pwede siyang ganito kalayo, Pwedeng ganito, basta hindi siya nagtama, okay lang yan. Okay? So, i-measure nyo pa rin yung gap. Okay? Okay, yan. Uh, as what I have said, you record the distance in centimeter. Okay, scoring, record zipper test to the nearest 0.1 centimeter.
Okay. So, this is the table on how you are going to obtain scores maliban sa actual score in centimeter. So, kapag zero, did not touch the fingers. So, ito yung tinatawag natin na ano, gap. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, hindi nagtama yung fingers ng dalawang kamay nyo. Then, number one, just touch the fingers. Yung katulad nung pinakita ko kanina, nagtama lang. Ganyan lang siya. Then, fingers overlap, yun na, yung lumagpas na. So, may sukat yan. Kung 1 to 2 cm yung overlap, syempre makukuha nyo yan by using ruler, ang score niya ay 2. Fingers overlap by 3 to 4 cm, score is 3. 5 to 7 cm, the score is 4. And of course, if the fingers overlap by 8 cm and more, or more, the score is 5. Okay, so now we do the flexibility test of the lower back and hamstring muscles. So in order to do that, we use the sit and reach. So this is the proper way of doing the activity. For the equipment, we make use of tape measure or meter stick. And these are the things that the performer needs to do. The very first one, the performer should sit on the floor with back, head, and shoulders flat on the wall. Feet should be 12 inches apart. So, isang ruler. May kita nyo yan dun sa upper left illustration. Yan, ganyan kalayo. Then, interlock thumbs and position the tip of the fingers on the floor without bending the elbows. After the partner has positioned the zero point of the tape measure, the pupil or the student starts the test by sliding the hand slowly forward without jerking trying to reach the farthest point possible without bending the knees. Bouncing or jerking movement is not allowed and you should do it twice. So dito, before we do the actual test, kinukuha muna yung zero point ninyo. So iba-iba yan. Kaya kung mapapansin ninyo, kung nagawa nyo na to dati, hindi nakafix yung meter stick sa floor kasi susukatin pa yan kung hanggang saan ang abot ng middle finger nyo. So kung saan yung abot yon ang magiging zero point. In the normal setting, gumagamit ako ng folder or anything na matigas na pwede kong ilagay sa meter stick. Makikita nyo yan dyan sa lower right ng illustration. So bakit gumagamit niyan? Ang purpose ng folder or anything na matigas na ginagamit ko kasama ng meter stick ay para masukat ng maayos kung hanggang saan ang naabot ninyo. Kung minsan kasi, di ba, nakakaramdam kayo na masakit na yung likod, Gusto nyo nang umangat, minsan biglang naangat yung performer kasi hindi niya nakaya, hindi na nakita o nahabol ng nasukat kung hanggang saan yung naabot nyo. So sayang naman siya kung uulitin nyo pa. So yung folder, ipupush nyo lang yon para kahit umangat kayo, may iwan pa din yung folder kung hanggang saan yung naabot ninyo. At masusukat siya ng maayos. Okay, for the partner, as the performer assumes the B procedure, position the zero point of the tape measure at the tip of the middle finger of the performer. See to it that the knees are not bent as the performer slides the farthest distance that he could. Record the farthest distance reach in centimeters. And the scoring, the record... Re, uh, you should record the farthest distance between the two trials to the nearest centimeters. So let's say na nagbend yung knees, you remind the one taking the test, ha? You do not hold the knees or ipitin para hindi magbend. Yung iba kasi, ang ginagawa, hinahawakan o kaya inuupuan, wag nyong gagawin yun, ha? And of course, pag nakita nyo na nagbend yung tuhod niya, hindi nyo yun i-record. It should be repeated. Okay, next is the cardiovascular endurance. So what do you mean when we say cardiovascular endurance? So cardiovascular endurance refers to the ability of the heart, the lungs, and the blood vessels to deliver oxygen to working muscles and tissues, as well as the ability of those muscles and tissues to utilize the oxygen. So in order to identify the cardiovascular endurance, we do the three-minute step test. So, for the equipment, we make use of 
step. So, dito, of course, we have to consider the level of students in identifying the height of the step. So, for elementary students, we make use of step with a height of 8 inches. And for the secondary, we have a step with a height of 12 inches. Next, we use stopwatch. O kung halimbawang wala po tayong stopwatch, we can make use of our cellphone since meron naman siyang stopwatch. Then, we use clapper or metronome with speaker or any similar device. So, ano po ba yung metronome? So, ang metronome, it is a device that we can use to mark exact time. So, by beat po yun. For every beat, isang galaw, makikita natin yan sa susunod na slide. Okay, so ito po yung um, illustration kung papaano ba ginagawa yung 3-minute step test. Okay, so these are the things that a performer needs to do. So before you do the activity, kukunin po muna natin yung ating pulse rate. So kung ano yung mas madali sa inyo, by car carotid pulse or radial pulse, okay lang. It's just the same. Then, second, you have to stand at least one foot away from the step or bench with trunk erect and eyes looking straight ahead. The next one is the first step of the sequence should be alternate. Okay? At the signal go, step up and down the step. Bench for 3 minutes at a rate of 96 beats per minute. One step consists of 4 beats. Ito yung sinasabi natin kanina, kaya tayo gumagamit ng metronome or clapper. That is, up with the left foot, count 1. Up with the right foot, count 2. Down with the left foot, count 3. Down with the right foot, count 4. That is for the first sequence. Then, for the second sequence, up with the right foot, count 1. Up with the left foot, count 2. Down with the right foot, count 3. Down with the left foot, count 4. For the second sequence. Observe proper breathing. Inhale with the nose. Exhale through the mouth. So, kung mapapansin nyo, um, alternate yung paggawa natin. Kung ang unang ginawa nyo, ang una nyong iniangat, ay yung left foot. Sa susunod, ay yung right foot naman. Okay? So, hindi natin ginagawa na puro right or puro left. Then, let's say for example, ang una nyong iniangat ay yung inyong left foot, kailangan ang una nyo ring ibababa ay yung inyong left foot. Okay? So, same as what we have seen in the second illustration. Ganyan siya. Okay. Immediately after the exercise, stand and relax. Locate your pulse and in 5 seconds, starts to get, start to get the heart rate. Don't talk while taking the pulse beat. Count the pulse beat for 10 seconds and multiply it by 6. Okay, for the partner, as the student assumes the position in front of the step, signal ready and go. Start the stopwatch for the 3 minute step test. Okay, so it only means that the performer should wait for her or his partner to signal ready and go. So, kapag narinig niya yung ready, it only means na kailangan maging alert na siya, yung performer, na anytime pwede nang magsabi yung partner niya ng go at kailangan niya nang mag-start ng activity. So, at the same time, the partner must see to it na pag nagsabi siya ng go, Kasabay nung pagsabi niya ng go, pipindutin niya na yung stopwatch at papaganahin niya na yung metronome. Okay? Or yung clapper. After the test, allow performer to locate his or her pulse in 5 seconds. So, dito, let's say for example, natapos na yung 3 minutes. So, ibig sabihin, stop na rin yung activity. The moment that the partner says stop, bibigyan yung performer ng 5 seconds to locate his or her pulse whether carotid or radial pulse, katulad ng nakikita nyo sa illustration. 
Then kapag na-locate na in 5 seconds, that is the time wherein magbibigay na yung partner ng signal na kailangan ng bilangin nung performer yung pulse beat niya for 10 seconds. Then, let the performer count his or her pulse beat for 10 seconds and multiply it by 6. So, kung ilang pulse beat yung mabibilang nyo in 10 seconds, multiply nyo lang siya by 6. Tapos, yun na yung i-record nyo sa nakalagay na column for after the activity. Scoring, so record the 60 second heart rate after the activity. So yung 60 second, it is the same as the nagbilang kayo ng pulse beat for 10 seconds and multiply it by 6. Ginagawa lang yun kasi steady naman yun eh, parehas lang ang makukuha nyo. Pero if you wish to do the 60 seconds na talaga magbibilang kayo ng 1 minute, ayaw nyo yung 10 seconds multiply by 6, it's, it's up to you. Walang problema doon. It's the same. Okay, now we go to strength and we discuss about how to do the push-up. Okay, so for the equipment, we are going to make use of exercise mat or any clean mat. Kung ano po yung available, walang problema. Basta, wag lang po yung madulas. Okay, kailangan na kaano, kailangan na lumalaban siya sa sahig, lalo na kung nakatiles po tayo sa bahay. Then, for the performer, these are the things that you have to remember. So, the very first one, you have to lie down on the mat, face down in standard push-up position, palms on the mat, about shoulder width. So, ibig sabihin, ganyan siya kalayo. Okay? Hindi ganun. Hindi naman ganun. Hindi masyadong malapit, hindi masyadong malayo. Okay. Um, fingers pointing forward and the legs straight parallel and slightly apart with the toes supporting the feet. So, hindi po magkadikit yung ano, hindi po magkadikit yung mga binti natin ha. Kailangan medyo magkalayo. Konti lang naman, huwag naman sobrang layo. So, tatansyahin niyo syempre. Perform as many repetitions as possible, maintaining a cadence of 20 push up per minute. 2 seconds going down and 1 second going up. So, ibig sabihin po noon, bibigyan lang kayo ng 2 seconds para makababa. Then, 1 second para umangat. Ganun lang po ka bilis. Okay, so dito, may kita nyo, kailangan po pantay mula ulo hanggang sa legsa. Hindi pwede na naka nakaumbok po yung kweta natin. Kailangan ganyan yung itsura niya. Actually, hindi pa nga perfect na perfect yan. Eh, dapat medyo mababa, mababa pa yung kweta niya. Okay. So, ayan. So, as you can see, iba po ang position ng boys sa girls. Iba po yung paraan ng pagpupush up ng babae sa lalaki. So, for boys, straighten the arms, keeping the back and the knees straight. Then, lower the arms until there is a 90 degree angle at the elbows. Upper arms are parallel to the floor. For girls, with knees in contact with the floor. So, ito yun na. Ito yung pinakaiba niya. Yung lalaki, ang may contact lang sa, ano, sa floor, yung kanyang palm at yung kanyang toes. Pero sa babae, ang may contact naman ay yung palm at yung knee. Okay? With knees in contact with the floor, straightens the arms, keeping the back straight, then lowers the arms until there is a 90 degree angle at the elbows. Upper arms are parallel to the floor. Okay, for the partner, as the performer assumes the position of push-up, start counting as the performer lowers his her body until he she reaches 90 degrees angle at the elbow. Ayan po, ah, maliwanag yan. So, hindi, di, hindi ang bilang natin ay pag naka-down 1, pag naka-up 2. Hindi po ganun ha. Kailangan, maibaba niya yung sarili niya, tapos may angat niya, that is 1. Pag na, nakababa siya ulit, tapos na iangat niya ulit yung sarili niya, that is 2. Ganun po yung bilang ha. Hindi yung down 1, up 2. 
two down, three up, four. Hindi ganon ha. The para the partner rather should stand in front of the student and his her eyes should be close to elbow level to accurately judge the 90 degrees bend. So kailangan makita nyo na nagagawa niyo yun. Hindi pwede na kung hanggang saan lang. Kasi minsan, di ba, gusto nating umangat pero hindi na natin kayang makuha yung tamang form. So hindi po pwede yun. Make sure that the performer executes the push up in the correct form. So yun yung titignan. Yun yung purpose ng partner. Kailangan magawa niya yung tamang position. The test is terminated when the performer can no longer execute the push-ups in the correct form. Is in pain, voluntarily stops, or cadence is broken. So, paano yun? So, mag stop na kayo ng time, syempre, kapag hindi na kaya nung nagpa-perform. Pag halimbawa, hindi niya na kayang hindi niya na kayang mapantay, nakaumbok na yung puwet niya, o kaya sumasayad na yung, yung chan niya sa, uh, sa floor. Tapos kapag halimbawa nagsasabi na siya na masakit na, hindi niya na kaya, masakit na yung mga braso niya. Then kapag nagsabi siya na ayaw niya na, or kapag hindi niya na nagawa yung 2 seconds na pagbaba at 1 second na pagtaas. Yun yung sinasabi natin, cadence is broken. Then recording, to record the number of push-ups made. So, wala tayong susundin na ano dyan. Kung gaano karami yung nagawa niya, yun yung i-record ninyo. Okay, so again, uh, strength pa rin tayo, but in this case, we are going to discuss about the basic plank. <clears throat> So, basic plank, uh, gagamitin nyo rin ay exercise mats or any clean mat. Provided da hindi din madulas, lalo na nga kung nakatiles tayo. Okay, so for the performer, assume the push-up position. Rest body on forearms with palms and fingers flat on the floor. Elbows are aligned with the shoulders. Legs are straight with ankles, knees, and tights. Touching together. Support weight on forearms and toes. Make sure that your back is flat. Head, neck, and spine are in straight line. Keep abdominals engaged, contracted. Do not let stomach drop or allow hips to rise. So, dito, naka, naka ano lang kayo, firm lang yung position. Dapat naka-stable lang siya. Hindi ka tulad sa push-up na kailangan yung bumaba at umangat. Pero, ang pinakaiba lang niya, kasi nakalagay dyan, um, assume the uh, push-up position. In this um, activity, hindi gagamitin nung girls yung position niya nung ginagawa niya yung push-up. Ang gagayahin ng girls ay yung position nung boys during the push-up. Okay? For the partner... Ensure the availability of mat, smooth flooring, or anything that can protect the forearms. Yan. Kasi, ito, naka, nakababa kasi ito eh. Okay? So, kailangan ma... hindi magaspang yung pag, pagpapatungan. Kasi, syempre, ma, ma ano sa balat ngayon. Then, give the signal start, go, and start, press the timepiece. So, dito gumagamit din tayo ng stopwatch. Hindi na-mention kanina dun sa equipment, hindi ko siya naisama. So, dito gumagamit din ng stopwatch. Magsasabi din kayo ng start or go, yung partner. Yun yung aantayin ng uh, performer. Then, pagkasabi nyo ng start or go, at the same time, kailangan na pindot nyo rin yung stopwatch. Then, make sure that the back of, of the head, neck, spine, and ankles are in straight line. Yan. Titignan nyo yun lagi. Give two warning. So, let's say, for example, uh, ayaw niya pa ding tumigil sa activity, pero nakikita nyo, uh, bumababa na yung sa may balakang niya, o kaya, nang bumagalaw-galaw na siya, bumababa-baba niya na yung ulo niya. Parang umaan na siya, inaayos-ayos niyo na yung form niya, bigyan niyo siya ng warning. Dalawang warning ang allowed. Stop the time when the performer can no longer hold the required position or when the performer has held the position for at least 90 seconds. 
holding the plank position beyond 90 seconds is considered unnecessary. Okay, so this is the time na magi i stop kayo or i determinate yun na yung activity kapag hindi na kayang i hold ng performer yung tamang position. Yung, yung sinasabi na kailangan um, naka straight line yung head, yung neck, spine, and ankles. Okay? Then, kung halimbawa naman na kaya niya pang i-hold yung position niya pero lalagpas na siya ng 90 seconds o nag-reach na siya ng 90 seconds, stop na. Okay na yon Hindi na siya kailangan. Then, scoring, record the time in the nearest seconds or minute. So, seconds, syempre, kapag hindi siya umabot ng minute. Kapag umabot na siya ng minute, di, yun na yung lalagay ninyo. Okay, so that is the proper position in doing basic plank. Mapababae or mapalalaki. Okay, so this is the scoring matrix. So, zero if the performer cannot hold. Yung umpisa pa lang, hindi niya na talaga kaya. Okay, yung bumab bumagsak na talaga siya. Then, 1 to 15 seconds na nakahold siya. 1. 16 to 30 seconds, 2. 31 to 45 seconds, 3. 46 to 50 seconds, 4. And 51 seconds and above, 5. So, dito, 51 seconds hanggang 90 seconds yan, 5. Kapag kasi 90 seconds na, tama na, hayaan nyo na siya, tapos na yun. Okay, thank you for listening. So, I hope uh, before you do the activity, you take note of all the reminders and follow cor correct procedures. So, this video is intended, or this video lesson rather, is intended to guide you on how you are going to do the health-related physical fitness test. So, a separate video for the skill-related fitness test will be given to you. So, hanggat wala pa siya, ito na lang muna yung unahin natin. And... Please ask for assistance. So, kung napapansin nyo, lahat ng activity ng physical fitness test ay merong task ang partner. Hindi nyo po siya pwedeng gawin mag-isa. So, uh, at this point, you have to ask for the assistance of your parent, your guardian, or sibling, kung sino man yung available para mag-guide kayo at para magawa nyo siya ng tama. Kasi you have to perform and you have to record, you have to count. So, hindi nyo siya pwedeng gawin mag-isa. So, you ask for assistance. Okay, so thank you very much and have a good day.